This is a quick demo to show how to get your Power Velocity controller up and running in just a few minutes. You have a VESC tool running alongside with the application, with the phone application. In this case it's Android. Um, we just use VESC tool to show what's going on and basically monitor the progress of it. You don't really need to run it uh, when you use the application. It's just uh, to give us a little bit more information and understand what's going on. So in this case we're using an Android application so if it's an iPhone you would go to the Apple Store to download one or in um, for Android you would go to Google Play Store and uh, you would go and look for Power Velocity just type that and once you have it there you have, you'll have two applications make sure you download next gen for this controller and it's already downloaded so and installed. The next thing you will do just hit this uh, button in the left, on the left, top left, and then go to the settings and hit connect. If you have your controller on, up and running, so you will see this uh, Bluetooth uh, connection data. Uh, you hit that, select that. So you'll hit that confirmation bit from the controller. Now you will be prompted to log in. Um, you'll use a test account. If you don't have an account, you can create one here using this link. Once you typed in your data, your login and password, just hit login. And you'll get a confirmation. Everything's good. Uh, here on the settings page you, you may want to adjust some of the settings uh, for example I like to use centigrade for all my temperatures here other than that I don't need to change anything here but I can if I want to go back so this this just shows that something is not uh, set correctly with my battery uh, and we will do that later we'll get back to this later but for now we'll go to program page and just wait here a little bit. Red, okay. So once the data is read into the application from the controller, leave everything default, don't change anything at this point. Go to the motor and here just hit detect button. You'll hear some sounds and we can see that in the vest tool. So that's resistant ducts detected and now we're spinning the motor to get the flux. Uh, setting all looks good and now finally we get uh, uh, hall sensor detection process going no need to touch anything here until it's completed and it read the configuration and everything looks good you can do just a quick check to make sure the um, configuration settings look reasonable in this case motor resistance is 27 for this large motor and this looks good and inductance is, looks good. Uh, everything else should be default, don't change anything here at this point. I just go back and the next thing you want to do is likely you want to set up okay. a throttle. So hit the throttle button. And here you can see what's going on. Right now I have a whole sensor throttle connected to it and once you're on the screen the power will be uh, um, disabled. So you, you're safe to, to spin the throttle or, or twist the throttle and uh, monitor, make sure that it get, you get the right signal. So I'm just spinning it, twisting it I guess, the right way to say it. So um, this allows me to do the, what I call auto train and basically I can copy this data once I twisted it, it detected the uh, minimums, the maximums and the uh, center. So this allows me to eliminate the dead band so to speak. And when I click apply this data is copied here and I don't need to change anything else. Unless I have a brake throttle, which is not connected at the moment, but I have that option as well. So I, I would twist 
the accelerator and brake throttle once and then apply the settings and they will be copied here or I can manually set them or adjust them the way I want it for example I want my midpoint to be maybe at this value once it's all set I can select which control type I want in this case I just have one throttle so it will be current control but if I have also a brake throttle I also like to use for example um, current no reverse brake ADC so that will use regen as well for the second throttle so I don't have it I'm going to just hit update it's going to save configuration the controller and I'm all set so at this point the controller should work as I twist the throttle the Red, okay. uh, the motor will spin but finally uh, what I also want to do is here just uh, set my currents so um, I will set from default let's say for this motor I can set all the way to 400 but I'll just leave it at say 200 for this uh, regen will leave it at that motor current I can also uh, change it if I like uh, battery cells so this is the one that will fix the um, dashboard let's say I have 20 but I can set all the way to 30 so that's not a problem I'll just set it chemistry type uh, capacity and everything else motor poles for this motor this looks re reasonable but I can also set this and it will affect my uh, distance and speed calculations throw management uh, depending on what uh, probe you have on your motor you can set these settings uh, it's either on most uh, QS controllers I mean motors you have uh, this type of which was what what I have and uh, other motors may have also an NTC and other there's a plenty of uh, options to select from um, here finally what I would like to do is set up my charging settings so the controller will allow you to um, charge from any DC source that is lower than your battery source and you can set the battery max current that's the maximum battery current you would like your battery to get um, you just say I want 10 amps for the battery charging current and my battery let's say it's I want to charge it up to I don't know uh, 95 volts is good and this is also to limit the charging current from the DC source. So if your DC source can output only 15 amps, you probably don't want to exceed that. Otherwise, you will overload that DC source. So in this case, I'll just say uh, 14. And also, this one uh, allows you, this setting allows you to start uh, charging immediately once you connect the charger to the controller. So Turn it on. Okay, everything looks good. I'll just hit update button here, and I'm all all done. Programming right. now. All good. Now, as you can see, it that fixed our um, dashboard. Now I can test the motor just by. Uh, spinning throttle and it all looks good all right that's all that's really it it's a three-step process again you, you detect the motor set up the throttle adjust your final settings for your battery your uh, speed calculations and, and other things and charger that's it thank you very much